Uh, actually, I'm, I'm finding these enjoyable. Shall we do one more? Can't oh, do you have to leave? No, no. Okay, so let's do I one more. I was going to ask you if you would okay. do one some more. So let's do uh, one more. Now, again, the key point here is to try to use these techniques. Let me remind you of the techniques here. The one technique you might not be using yet is getting the information out of the N. The N tells you, so this number tells you how many hydrogens there are in group A. Okay. But this number tells us how many hydrogens there were in the adjacent group. And that's really useful for putting the fragments together. Of course, I guess the main reason we were having trouble with that in the last problem is because we were thinking of this as a quartet. But if we write this down correctly, then this N number can give us a lot of very helpful information here. OK, well, we'll do one more. Thank you. Is there a particular one that we should do? Well, let's just do number three. They seem to be in a good order.
No, you're finished, huh? I think so. I, I, okay. I needed to merge it all together. Right? That's great. But this is really my A right here. What What are on the ends of these bonds? Hydrogens. All right, good. Outstanding. Well, what was your thought process there? Um, well, uh, once again, we have the higher uh, uh, chemical shift with um, that's slightly broadened. Right. And uh, we have five hydrogens, so I'm thinking uh, aromatic ring, the benzene ring. And then B, we have uh, a three- This is the right region for benzene. Yes. That's right. You also didn't mention we have the four degrees of unsaturation, which also seems to mean benzene. Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then on B, we have uh, 3.53, which mm -hmm. suggests uh, protons on a carbon that's adjacent to an electronegative atom. Right. And there's two hydrogens. That will put us in this region. Good. And there's two hydrogens connected to that. So I went ahead and I attached my two hydrogens and uh, to the tourmaline, I attached the uh, chlorine. The bromine? No, we're, no, this is. Uh, Did I make a mistake? Ah, oh, you're right. I should have said this was now. This is C10H13Cl. Good. And then uh, on uh, group C, I saw that we had. Uh, a uh, fairly low uh, uh, chemical shift, uh, and we had six hydrogens. So I'm thinking, um, I'm thinking uh, methyl groups. How many methyl groups? But with no, we have we have a singlet, right. and we have n equals zero. So it's going to be two methyl groups attached to a carbon with no hydrogens. Theoretically, it could also be three CH2 groups, but there's really no way to get that to work and still get the right number of carbons over here. So your guess was correct that there should be two CH3 groups. That's good. And it's good that you're focusing on the singlet. We know this carbon has no hydrogens. Good. And we could have said the same deal over here. These must also be adjacent to a carbon with no hydrogens, because this is also a singlet. Mm -hmm. OK, good. So that gives me enough carbons. And then you just all put all the pieces together. One thing you could have done on your benzene is after you show these five hydrogens, you might as well say, I know this is a carbon. In this case, this must be a carbon. It can't be the chlorine, because then that would be the end of the line. So we know this is a carbon here. And how many extra carbons do we need then? Three. We need three more carbons uh, that we have to account for. Well, now we can see what's going on here. Here's group B. And here's the two group C's. Let's make sure everything is making sense here. We know this is a good benzene absorption. We've seen that benzene tends to give us a singlet because even though these are not totally equivalent, they're all so close to each other that they're basically just giving us the one absorption with no splitting. Um, slightly broadened, maybe it's slightly broadened because they're real, this really does, uh, 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 this is not just a single equivalent hydrogen, but uh, three different groups, so that, that, that might account for the slight broadening over here. Where would our table predict group B would absorb? 3.6 to 3.8? That's right. I'm a little bit uh, surprised that this is actually a little bit to the right of that, but it's pretty close. So again, you, you, have, to, you have to take the table with a grain of salt. Uh, it doesn't always give the exact right answers there. And where would the table predict that group C would absorb? Yeah, now this is pulled considerably... To the left of the chloride. It's pulled to the left because of the chlorine and also because of the benzene. Both the benzene and the chlorine are pulling it to the left. So it's not too surprising that we're in this 1.39 region. It, doesn't represent the, it does not represent being adjacent to an electronegative element, but it represents that they're adjacent to uh, carbons that are adjacent to these electronegative chlorine or the benzene. So everything seems to match up pretty well here. This is really the only possible outcome. All right, that'll be as much time as we have. Let's, sure. I'll take a look at the answers and make sure we got those right. So let's see, number one, two is supposed to be two phenyl ethanol. Did you write down the our answer we got for number one? C two phenyl ethanol. That's right. And number two is supposed to be one three dibromopropane. What was the second one we did? One, yeah, one three, three dibromopropane. And the one we just did was one chloro. 
one chloro, two methyl, two phenyl. Yeah. Okay. So we got all those right. Cool. Good. Well, I think we made some good progress on that one. You actually you figured this out this one out before I had time to put it on the board. So that was good. That's indicating awesome. uh, I think we're a lot further along than we were yesterday. So we, we went through a lot of material here.